is live from the News Up here at the Sunway in Accra. This is News 360. I'm Isa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up, the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint, Piccadilly Biscuits, and My Life Insurance. Teachers undergoing training on new education curricula for test allowances given them in Kumasi. Ablikuma West Assembly to begin construction of storm drains following demolition of houses along the Gbebu Lagoon. And also coming up, University of Ghana Hospital set to be fully operational and open to the public on November 1. Also in the news, teachers at Kremokrum Basic School in Doma East battle privacy as a total of 13 share just two rooms that's two rooms that's on mission in 20 minutes stay with us on the international front airstrikes kill more than dozen civilians including 11 children in rebel held northwestern syria in the last two days in an escalation of a russian backed offensive All that and more coming up this hour on News 360. And we first begin with this developing story. And pressure is mounting on the Bank of Ghana to be transparent on the prosecution of persons whose actions led to the collapse of some banks and financial institutions in the country. Players in the sector argue that the seeming secrecy on the prosecution does not enhance public confidence in the regulator. The Bank of Ghana indicated it was going to be tough and punitive on persons whose actions led to the collapse of some banks in the country in 2017. A special investigative team set up to probe financial crimes in the country referred many dockets on some members of staff as well as directors of the defunct banks to the Attorney General's office for advice and possible prosecution. Two years down the line, not much has been heard about these cases and punishments for anyone. Governor of the Bank of Ghana, however, says over 44 of these persons will be prosecuted by the end of the year. But development economist Dr. George Domfe says the pace of the regulator on the issue is not encouraging. 41 or so of them uh, from the bank are now being engaged by Ami Yoko. I mean, that is not enough. We, we don't hear anything. I wish, uh, you know, uh, we will hear that Susan and so is being prosecuted on this on, on that land. You know, this is how they are going to deal with it. Uh, oh, I mean, we are, we, are, we, are, we are working to make sure they are punished. We are working to make sure we are punished. In the next two years, you don't hear anything and the matter does that. Then yeah, people know. are not going to plan to come back on this. <laughs> Economist Dr. Lord Mensah says the lack of transparency could lead to a recurrence of a similar banking crisis. The way we treat, we treat this, the happenings now would depend, would determine whether this thing has a chance to reoccur. Okay. Until we come out clearly to the public to tell them what someone has done and in the end these are the punitive measures. Sources say the investigative team is currently engaging the Attorney General on appropriate charges to be preferred against them and other related legal advice. And rural banks in the country are also going through their fair share of the banking sector cleanup, which experts have described as a watered down and fit for purpose. Banking consultant Nano Two Champion says the process, which is peculiar to the rural and community banks, will focus on rectifying some administrative and ownership challenges in the banks. The rural and community banking concept was introduced in 1976 with a view to providing financial intermediation and inclusion in rural areas. According to the Bank of Ghana, the number of rural banks has increased from the initial one to over 144, with over 700 branches spread across the 16 regions of the country. All 144 rural and community banks were expected to raise their paid-up capital to 500,000 cities by December 2016 and 1 million cities by December 2018. It has been two years since the Bank of Ghana started a clean-up of the financial sector. Already, Tier 1 banks' microfinance companies have been affected. 
On Friday, August 16, the Bank of Ghana revoked the licenses of 23 savings and loans companies and finance houses. The central bank has so far revoked the license of 420 financial institutions, which it claimed were insolvent. According to the Bank of Ghana, the decision was taken in the interest of depositors. Some have queried when the rural and community banks would be touched. Banking consultant Danotwe Champon says the banks are also being cleaned up. These 144, admittedly, we have one or two with challenges, but they are administrative challenges. Mm. Now, the corporate governance, for instance, the one that has been done is for only uh, universal banks, savings and loans and finance houses. Rural banks are getting a watered-down version created specifically for them. Speaking on the key point, he emphasized that the banking sector cleanup has been worth it. Away from the banking sector, chiefs and residents of Bebeise in the Ablikuma West Municipal Assembly have appealed to the Municipal Chief Executive, George Bray, to as soon as possible begin with the construction of the storm drain that led to the demolition of hundreds of houses along the Bebe Lagoon. The residents, led by their chief, Ni Adute Famlite the first, says they will be forced to take over the demolished area if the Assembly does not make use of the area demolished. Demolished, a report by Joseph Armstrong. On July 12, the Ablukma West Municipal Assembly demolished a building sited on the Begbe Lagoon in Begbeise, a Sabbath of Dansoman. The demolition, led by a team of tax force from the Assembly together with armed policemen, pulled down several structures. Some residents of Gubeise looked on helplessly as excavators pulled down their houses. Many struggled to reclaim what they could from the remains. Hundreds were left homeless a month after the exercise. Residents of Gubeise, led by their chief, Ni Adoti Farmlinte, the first Bebe Shabumanche, have appealed to the municipal chief executive of Ablukuma West Municipal Assembly, George Sero Bray to give a specific date for the intended construction of the storm drain that led to the demolition. We, we appeal with the Chief Executive and the MP. On behalf of my people of the British Government, we appeal to him that since the way has been paved uh, while the construction, we are now looking up to them. Now, when are they going to start the whole project? In his response, the Chief Executive, George Sir Bray, explained all is set for the construction to start. We are looking at possibly in the next week or two, the silting the place so as to make way or create uh, space for uh, water to flow if we are to have any major rains within the next couple of days. So uh, I can assure the chief and his people, uh, within the next week or two, they should see our equipment within his jurisdiction so as to let work start earnestly. He later presented sack of maize, cooking oil, fish, palm kennel and drinks to support this year's Homo War Festival of the people of Gubi Shabu traditional area. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News, Accra. Right, and for the second week running, the story of the missing girls in Takra, the efforts to find them, is our story of the week. This week, the Acting Inspector General of Police, James Upombuenu, paid a visit to the family of the victim. Kwacha Fremyama has more in this report. Last week, as you may recall, the family of the kidnapped girls organized a news conference and raised a number of concerns, including why, in their view, the police had kept them in the dark concerning the discovery of human remains suspected to belong to the girls. Days later, on Tuesday, Acting Inspector General of Police James Opombuenu and a team of police personnel paid a visit to four families whose relatives have gone missing for more than a year in the Sekendi Takrade metropolis. 
The IGP's visit took him to Takwa to the house of a fourth victim, Ruth Abaka. Addressing the media later, Director of Public Affairs at the Ghana Police Service, ACP David De Clou, said the acting IGP has given his assurance that there will be no objection to calls for an independent forensic audit. One or two of the family members raised that concern and it was made clear to them by the Inspector General of Police and his team that we don't have any objection to that. If they want to engage an independent person or expert to do that, it is, it is normal that you need to confirm what we have. The family of the victims expressed full confidence in the acting IGP. For the acting IGP to move all the way from Accra to Takradi, uh, actually to come and visit the family to encourage us to, I mean, get our report, some of our views that we think the police didn't do well with us and other stuff. And you also give us, uh, give the family assurance that whatever be the case, they are going to work hard. No singular individual has come under bashing over the kidnappings more than CID Director General Mami Tiwa Adedankwa. But speaking at a program in Accra on Wednesday, she said there's simply no way she's going to resign despite the criticisms. I don't need to resign. Resigning is like resigning from the Ghana Police Service. So the position is not something that I can. I have to resign and say I am no longer a Director General CID. It is a point where it's like posting, transfer. The four-week deadline the police are set for itself to conclude with a DNA testing on the human remains suspected to belong to the kidnapped girls expires in two weeks. Kwache Afreniyama, TV3 News. In other news tonight, 240 lives have been lost through road accidents in the first half of the year in the Ashanti region. The police service has been well called for stakeholder support to curb the alarming number of fatalities. Despite efforts to reduce road accidents and fatalities in the Ashanti region, the figures remain alarming. From January to June this year, the Ashanti region recorded 1,921 accidents, 240 persons were killed, whilst 2,309 persons were injured within the six-month period. Ashanti Regional Deputy Police Commander ACP David Ajiman Ajem is alarmed at the rate of accidents. About 10 accidents each day. 11 injuries every day and the shocking one is that we lose two persons every day in the region and we think that this is too much and um, we need to do something about it. The police command has rolled out a program dubbed Operation Reduce Road Traffic Accident to make the road safer. We will intensify road education for drivers, especially the commercial drivers because we realize that about 70% of all the road traffic accidents are coming from these commercial drivers. Meanwhile, over 100 drivers within the Kumasi metropolis have been arrested for various road traffic offences. The offences included excessive speeding, wrongful overtaking, driving without licence, underage drivers and driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Minibars, commercial vehicles with adjusted and rebuilt seats to take on 15 passengers instead of 12 were also impounded. This forms part of an operation to afford passengers comfort and safety while they are on board commercial transport. The police command says it will continue with the operation until it guarantees safety on the roads. Two persons have been confirmed dead in Lukaku in the North Gonja district of the Savannah region. The incident was reportedly triggered by a misunderstanding over the construction of a mosque between the Gonjas and Mampusi in the area. Four persons also sustained various degrees of wounds. Gonjas and Mampusis have had misunderstandings over who owns Lukula in recent past. The situation led to the Yadonura sending a delegation led by the Savannah Regional Minister Adam Salifu Braima to meet with the Nairi to agree on a roadmap to settle the Lukula issue. Meanwhile, reports indicate the town has been deserted with security beefed up in the area.
Now, residents of Tanyigbe, Poji, and other communities in the whole municipality of the Volta region have appealed for a support to check erosion in the area. Erosion has affected roads in the hilly communities with some houses also hanging dangerously. Tanyigbe is one of the four divisions located south of the whole municipality. Three of the divisions, Tanyigbe Eto, Tanyigbe Zapa and Tanyigbe Anyigbe, are sited in valleys providing an attractive topography of the towns. But the hilly nature of the landscape has led to severe erosion. Several trenches cut across roads in these communities, making mobility extremely challenging in some instances. Severe erosion has swept the earth beneath houses, leaving most hanging dangerously. Residents blamed the development on lack of proper drainage systems in the area. Assemblyman for the area, Maoli Bachu, appealed for support to deal with the challenge. Uh, this road is a business road. Wait, they have taken the cocoa, timber, maize, and so it is affecting us a lot. And even look at the cover. We are appealing for the people to come and assist us, but nothing is happening to it. Months after our first visit, construction of culverts at Tanigbe Etho has started. Checks revealed the Member of Parliament for the area commissioned the work which is expected to cover the other communities. Engineers at the Ofoeko Municipal Assembly are collaborating with the Ghana grid company Gridco to fix a weakened high tension tower in the area. The tower is on the verge of collapse as portions of the ground base is fast eroding. Portions of the soil that hold the high tension tower started washing away about three years ago. The local assembly has yet to respond to calls for the construction of a drain to divert the water course. The intervention would have halted the erosion from further weakening the high tension. Some residents who spoke to the news team fear an imminent disaster in the event of a heavy storm. This was not how the erosion was. But constant rains have worsened the situation. Something should be done about it before the high tension breaks down. He has heard the power line might fall. He pleaded with the government to intervene. Engineers at the Oforikro Municipal Assembly say they are working with the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, to fix the problem. You're watching News 360 from the News Hub. We have more news coming up shortly. To stay with us. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. Privacy remains a challenge as 13 teachers posted to the Kramokrom Roman Catholic Basic School in the Doma East District of the Bono region share two rooms. Authorities say the issue is widespread in the districts. East District has been decentralized to serve people, especially those in the hinterlands who could not trek for hours to access education in the district capital. The Kremokrome School is one of such learning institutions. Pupils from more than four adjoining communities come to acquire formal basic education here, and so 13 teachers comprising three females and 10 males have been posted there to render tuition. But accommodation is inadequate. Two rooms provided by the Parents Teacher Association is what accommodates all the teachers. One has been allotted to the female teachers while the remainder houses the men. To the teachers, privacy is a worry. As for privacy matters, I can't talk about it now. But since we have a um, desire to teach and we have the the love for the students, we are still living here to do the work. 
Interestingly, the accommodation has no bathroom, so the open space is the only alternative. Half of bath house, we stand outside to bath. And the ladies too, we all stand outside to bath. Room rental also comes with challenges. In villages, uh, uh, people build their houses according to the number of people in the in the in, in the house. Uh, for instance, uh, if I am the husband and I have one wife, three children, I'll build just two rooms. I am my wife will occupy one, and the rest of my children will occupy one. So if you are, I mean, a stranger and you are coming in, how do you get? a place uh, nice for you to sleep. Two years ago, the community assured the teachers of providing extra accommodation for them, but that is yet to materialize. Doma East District Education Director Joseph Amwamensa finds the condition of the teachers pathetic. The schools out there, you send teachers there, yes, they have to go, but you look at the conditions and so many other things, and sometimes, when you're so strict on them, you yourself, you don't even have the moral grounds to do that. Because uh, they don't even get rooms to hide. And teachers who have just come up from school or on reposting, how do you expect them to build their own houses within the, the constraints of time? And they don't even know the terrain very well. This is not the only challenge facing the school. The makeshift structure accommodating kindergarten pupils has also deteriorated, exposing occupants to danger. District Chief Executive for Doma East, Emmanuel Ajeman, said although funding is a challenge, the Assembly is prepared to support community-initiated projects. It's not possible that the Assembly can capture all those schools, but what we are paying so much attention to is the self-help, so that when the communities do something, if we have somebody somewhere who would want to support in any way, then the assembly will also give the um, support that uh, it can afford. At Kremokrum, enrollment, I'm told, had dwindled, but teachers say they are doing their best to retain the rest. The declined enrollment was partly attributed to the irregular school feeding program. The parents know that when they come here, they will get food to eat. Unfortunately, when they, sometimes when they come, they don't get the food. So you see the children, uh, they are sitting down quietly. Or if you ask the person, you say, oh, I am sick. But as a teacher, we know that they are not sick. Actually, they are hungry. The following day, you see that the children didn't come to school. They don't come to school. District Education Director Joseph Amwamensa is worried the Education Directorate was not involved in the school feeding program. We, the managers of the educational institutions, we are we are left in the in the in the in the entire system of uh, school feeding. You don't know who the caterer is. You don't know when he's giving what, and so if you pop your nose much into it, sometimes you incur the displeasure of some big men. Uh -huh. So uh, I should think that it's time we are roped into the system so that we all monitor what goes on. Let's stay in the Doma East District of the Bono region where construction of a branch campus of the University of Energy and Natural Resources is not progressing for lack of funds for Stanley Nibler's report. The University of Energy and Natural Resources has its main office in Sinyang, the Bono regional capital. But four years ago, some key personalities in Doma in Kro lobbied to host a branch of the university resources on their soil. The previous administration granted their request and the Ghana Education Trust Fund awarded the project on a contract. In 2016, brisk work was done but later halted. The project, which was scheduled to be completed within an 18-month period, is now in its fourth year with about 45% of work done. The mission's team checks revealed that GetFund has not released money for completion of the project, although the contractor has raised certificates requesting for funds. 
Some of the workers have been laid off because the contractor could not pay them. District Chief Executive for Dama East, Emmanuel Ajiman, was disappointed the project has not been completed. We are very much worried, not just me, but the people of Dama East, particularly the people of Tremelsu, the land that was taken over there. Uh, the, a lot of our people in Tremors who were farming there and in fact because of the agency of the project the people who had farms there like maize, cassava, what have you they were not even allowed to take their, their produce almost everything was destroyed uh -huh. so if the university comes in at least um, uh, some of the students will be buying water in Chemesu and uh, farmers who might have lost their farm produce as a result of that can be making some money. So when it delays, it kind of affects everybody. Meanwhile, the Doma campus of the University of Energy and Natural Resources has already commenced admission and is in its third year. This was made possible after the paramount chief of the Doma Traditional Council, Osajefu Osiadeyo Ajimambedu II, ceded his building to be used temporarily in running the institute, hoping government would complete construction of the main campus within the stipulated time frame. In July this year, Finance Minister Ken Ofuriata, answering questions in Parliament, said government has cleared all get fund arrears old contractors, but those constructing the Dama campus of the University of Energy and Natural Resources say they are yet to receive their money. And that's it for Mission. Mission is supported by the Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to Danida, UK Aid and the EU. And away from Mission, about 10 families have deserted their homes while close to 200 residents are taking steps to relocate owing to the unbearable smoke bellowing from Bung landfill site. Now the site has been in flames for the past 18 hours. How I see how the smoke is, it's, not, it's too bad. So me, as for me, I'm planning for tomorrow, I'll leave this house plus my kiddies and go to either village or anywhere I'll, I'll have find to have a, this in peace because of the kiddies. And then it two days, Madam Yentimi, Amami T. Makuma, Yentimi, Amami T. Demkwa, Nami Wami, Mpi, Ajina Yedem, Nina, Nti, Yenimni, Ebeye, Yonkwa, Ma. There is too much bad. <coughs> this is the reason why residents who live quite close to the landfill site are forced to relocate. Some have already relocated and others are preparing to move. Well, the fire service have been struggling for the past 24 hours to put out the fire, but it's been one struggle onto another. According to them, it will take more than two weeks for them to douse the flame on the landfill site. We understand that uh, this particular kind of fire might be on for about two weeks. Can you tell us what actually might have caused this kind of fire? But I'm suspecting probable causes that we have on these things is that sometimes this the rubbish, they generate heat themselves. And where the heat is generated, if there are combustibles there and they have a little oxygen supporting them, it ignites. You understand? Apart from that, people do it deliberate burning. People do it themselves to take out whatever they want, copper wires and metals out of them. If the metal is in a, a plastic sort of thing, they have to burn it down and then take over whatever they want.
Away from Thun, teachers who were given training towards the implementation of the revised kindergarten curriculum for KG1 and KG2 Saturday afternoon embarked on a demonstration at the T.I. Amadia Senior High School Center in Kumasi. In Kumasi, the teachers numbering over 100 at the T.I. Hamadiya Senior High School Center expressed their displeasure over the paltry allowance for the curriculum training. According to them, they were yet to receive 100 CDs for allowance and transportation, but only given 50 CDs at the end of the one-week training. Some of the teachers were holding placards with the inscription, Teachers are bread. They also raised concerns about the quality of food served them. Some aggrieved teachers spoke to TV3. Uh, we were made to understand that we'll be getting 50 cities for TNT and 50 cities for allowance, city allowance. And we were in the classroom when one of the metro um, officers came and told us that they were going to give us only 50 cities, which is cheating so we don't we don't want it oh the food was not anything to take home so depressed we are not happy they're taking us for granted for so long this time teachers we build teachers we buy cars teachers we buy petrol we do anything so now these people can cheat us the ghana education service ges and the national council for curriculum assessment recently launched a new curriculum which will be used in the ghanaian schools in the 2019 and 2020 academic year And in a related development, teachers currently undergoing training on the new curriculum in the Accra Academy Center have refused to take the allowance that was given them by the authorities. According to the teachers, the workshop that lasted for a week ended today and the teachers, per their understanding, were entitled to an allowance that's including TNT of 100 Ghana cities. But authorities clandestinely give each teacher 50 cities while they are required to sign a document that indicates that 100 cities has been received by each teacher with the excuse that the other 50 cities will be paid next week. According to the teacher who spoke on condition of anonymity, the participating teachers collectively refused this move and demanded that the amount be paid in full. The Attacker Academy, one of the centers of the training of the new curriculum. Um, the new director said we are supposed to pay 100 Ghana, but it seems people have paid, they said they are paying us 50 Ghana. And the people are not happy with this. So all of them are rejecting the money. So this is what is happening at the Accra Academy Center of the new. Thank you. Let's now focus on health and the University of Ghana Medical Center has set November this year to fully open the hospital to the general public. The center currently runs only three OPD clinics including pediatric clinic, the OPS and gynecology. The University of Ghana Medical Center has not been fully operational since it was opened a year ago. The facility was in the news following its delayed opening by the Ministry of Health and University authorities. But the director of University of Ghana Medical Center, Stimulation and Training Center, Professor Aaron Lawson, says the facility will now be fully opened to the general public in November. The 1st of November, the place will be fully set up for, for training. But we, are, we, we have an arrangement with uh, some people from the American Heart uh, Association Foundation, they will be coming in September to uh, train in cardiopulmonary resuscitation. But for a new hospital of this caliber, you need to go about things uh, slowly and pick at the appropriate time. You know, you know, so patients have been trickling in. He added that, proud of that, 
there will be a training on cardiopulmonary resuscitation in September where officials from the American Heart Association will train staff of the UGMC on how to handle cardiac arrest cases. The undergraduate students who come from the College of Health Sciences in the University of Ghana and then also undergraduate uh, students from other health training institutions. We have two, currently two private medical schools who are ready to come and uh, benefit from the simulation center. And then also nursing training institutions across the, uh, across the country. University of Ghana Medical Center was completed in 2016 by former President Mahama, but generated controversy after the current administration delayed in opening it to the public, citing a number of reasons, including inadequate staffing. Public relations officer of the center, Barbara owusu Hemen, however, says the hospital is operational. The, a lot has been happening behind the scenes over the past 12 months. There has been the successful negotiation between the government of Ghana and the University of Ghana in terms of um, an acceptable ownership arrangement. We have three of our OPD clinics running, namely the pediatric clinic, the OPS and gynae. Therefore, we actually handle antenatal cases and um, deliveries and postnatal services as well. A tour of the facility saw some patients receiving treatment in OPS and gynecology clinic. Joseph Armstrong, TV3 News, Accra. Still on health, over 300 individuals in and around Kwashima in the Gansalt municipality of the Greater Accra region received drugs and medical equipment after they were diagnosed of various diseases, including malaria. Consultant and gynecologist at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Theodore Buafo, advised Ghanaians to seek regular health check for health life. The event was organized as part of the church's 50th anniversary celebration to assist especially the vulnerable in the metropolis who are unable to access health care. Over 300 individuals received drugs after they were diagnosed with various diseases. Some participants also donated blood to support those in need at the various hospitals. Consultant and gynecologist at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Dr. Theodore Boafu, urged the public to develop the attitude of kindness through blood donation. Half yearly, we should go to donate blood for, uh, for, by the church so that... Um, we can at least supply blood to, I mean, some of the hospitals. Blood donation is what will save a lot of people's lives. We should all take up blood donation as something that is good. Blood donation really, really saves people's lives. If you ever seen somebody dying because there's no blood, it is sad. Principal nursing officer at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Eunice Jassa, entreated women to seek regular breast cancer treatment. For her part, Associate Pastor of the Church, Reverend Vida Agbo, noted the church will continue to support members of the area through health care and other means. We've been doing health bazaar for church members and people around. It's according to the Bible, 3 John 1. Uh, Paul said it's his desire that we stay in good health. So it's a wholeness kind of thing. After teaching the person the Bible, we get into what the, the responsibilities of the person also, which is physically what we have to do. So we go through distance and then get members informed about some of the diseases. So it's through this kind of exercise, some of them are able to detect things they didn't even know. Coming up is the latest in the world of sports with Juliet Biwa. And the maiden edition of the Ghana Music and Arts Awards Europe has been launched in Accra. The scheme is designed to celebrate the rich Ghanaian culture and to reward excellence in music and arts industry in Ghana and Europe. Europe will experience the best of Ghanaian arts and culture as the Made in Ghana Music and Arts Award sets sail on its shores. The scheme is designed 
to celebrate the rich Ghanaian culture and reward diligent Ghanaians within the music and arts industry, both in Ghana and Europe. Hey, 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 hey. Ladies and gentlemen, officially, the Ghana Music and Arts Awards has been launched. Despite being in its first year, the launch of the awards attracted a lot of interest. Some big names within media fraternity turned up to grace the occasion. It's, it's a step in the right direction. Anything that has to do with rewarding talent and the creativity, I, I think sort of motivates the artists and the people involved in the sense that they don't only represent Ghana in the country itself, but they are also selling Ghana outside. So just to appreciate their efforts of selling Ghana well, it's good to be putting up awards and babies like this up so that they will know that they're doing well and I think that should push them to even sell Ghana the more. <laughs> That's it for this edition of News 360 Live from Madison Way. There will be more updates on tradenews.com. I am Issa Moni. And I am Porsche Gabo. Enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.